In the last video, we saw our very first quantum gate, the quantum knot gate. The quantum knot gate, though, was sort of classical. It, it really didn't do uh, all that much beyond what is possible with a classical uh, knot gate. But in this video, we're going to see our first truly quantum gate, the so-called Hadamard gate. All right, what does the Hadamard gate do? Well, like with the uh, knot gate, we're going to start by explaining what the action is on the computational uh, basis uh, states and in particular it takes the zero state to the superposition zero uh, plus one over root two so the amplitudes uh, for both the zero and the one state are one over root two and it takes the uh, one state to zero minus 1 over root 2. So it has amplitude 1 over root 2 for the 0 state and minus 1 over root 2 for the 1 state, the output. And uh, much as uh, for the quantum knot gate, uh, the way the Hadamard gate acts on a superposition is linearly. So it takes alpha 0 plus beta 1 to alpha times the output for the zero state, zero plus one over root two, plus beta times zero minus one over root two. And that's a bit of a mess, so we collect up all the terms for the zero, giving an amplitude of alpha plus beta over root two for the zero, and uh, alpha minus beta over root two one. Okay, that looks like quite a mess. In fact, it is quite a mess. Um, fortunately, in practice, we're mostly not going to actually need to deal with this. I just wanted to do it to be sort of very explicit. Mostly what we're going to do is we're going to work uh, with the circuit representation or with the matrix uh, representation. So the circuit representation, much as for the NOT gate, is this. So it's a single qubit uh, gate and we denote it with an H uh, for Hadamard. And uh, so that's the, the circuit representation, very simple. Uh, and like the NOT gate, it also has a representation in the form of a matrix. So let's write that out. I'll tell you what it is, and then we'll just check quickly that it's correct. So this, I claim, is uh, the right matrix describing uh, this action on the quantum state. To check that that's the case, well, we need to check that it gives the right action on the 0 and the 1 state. So let's check on the 0 state. Uh, that's H. And then the 0 state is, of course, the 1, 0 column vector. And, well, that just gives us, uh, when we multiply this matrix uh, on that particular vector, it just gives us, in fact, the first column, 1 over root 2, 1, 1 which is indeed the 0 plus 1 over root 2 state. And similarly, if we take this matrix and act it on the 1 state, it's h times this column vector, which is in fact just the second column, 1 over root 2, 1 minus 1, which is 0 minus 1 over root 2. So that tells us that this uh, H matrix does indeed give the right action on the 0 uh, and 1 states, and because matrices act uh, linearly on vectors, they must therefore give the right action on any uh, state, a general state like this one uh, here as well. And if you wash, wish, you can go through and actually explicitly uh, check that. Okay, so you know, that's all very well to describe the Hadamard gate uh, in this uh, particular way, and you'll agree, I hope, that it is truly quantum. It's taking you know, these sort of more or less classical computational basis states and producing as output something which is obviously not actually classical. But you might ask the question, you know, what, why would we be interested in this kind of a gate? What does the Hadamard gate buy us? And it's a little while before we'll, I can give a comprehensive answer to that question, but I can explain uh, in terms of an analogy. And the analogy 
is this. I want you to imagine you know, that it's many, many thousands of years ago, and uh, here you are, uh, let's say in North Africa, and you want to get from where you are over to Spain, the Iberian uh, Peninsula. And okay, so how are you going to do that? Well, if you you know don't yet have uh, boats, you kind of have really a tough tough road ahead of you. What you need to do is go all the way through Africa, up and around and down. But if you build a new device, the boat, which gives you access to an expanded range of locations, uh, you know, sort of you expand the range of, of states that you can traverse, actually you only need to go overland a short way and then you can go through this new medium over to the Iberian Peninsula, really tremendously cutting down uh, the amount of time required. So what the Hadamard gate and similar gates do is they expand the range of states which it's possible for a computer to be in. And what's important about that is that by doing that kind of expansion, it actually creates the possibility to take shortcuts. Basically, we're, we're sort of, we're, you know, we're moving in a way uh, you know, that's not possible in a conventional classical computer, and maybe that actually lets us do some computations faster. Another similar sort of an analogy uh, is to the game of chess. Imagine that you are playing chess and the rules were changed a little bit in your favor, maybe uh, enabling your, uh, let's say, uh, your rook, um, you know, an expanded uh, range of moves that is given more flexibility. Well, that might enable you to achieve uh, things like checkmate uh, much faster because you can get to you know, new positions uh, much more quickly. And the same kind of thing is going on with the Hadamard gate. By expanding the range of, of states it can access or the range of dynamics it can generate beyond what's possible in a classical computer, we create the possibility of being able to take similar kinds of shortcuts. Okay, we'll actually see explicit examples later. Um, just to get sort of a bit more familiar with the Hadamard gate, let's do an analysis of a very simple circuit. So single quantum wire representing a single qubit. And we're going to do two Hadamard gates in a row. What's the effect of this? Actually, it's good to just pause a second and try and guess what you think the, the, get, the uh, result is going to be if you input an arbitrary quantum state. Once you've done that, let's look what happens to the zero state. Well, the first Hadamard gate takes it to the superposition, 0 plus 1 over root 2. And the second Hadamard gate, of course, takes, so we've got a over root 2, takes the 0 to 0 plus 1 over root 2, plus the 1 is taken to 0 minus 1 over root 2. And you'll notice that the one terms here cancel each other out. So you're just left with the zero term over root 2 times root 2, but there are two of them, so you actually end up with the zero state. It's not changed, in other words. And the one, gate, the one state excuse me, is taken to zero minus 1 over root 2 by the first gate, and then to zero plus 1 over root 2 minus 0 minus 1 over root 2. So now the 0 terms cancel with each other and the plus 1 terms reinforce. We've got a double minus here uh, and we end up with a 1 state as the output. So in fact this quantum circuit is also equivalent to the uh, quantum wire Okay, there's an alternate way of seeing this, uh, which I won't actually work through in detail, um, but again, you see that an arbitrary input psi is taken to by the first gate h psi, and then this state is taken to h times h psi, and you can check algebraically that if you take the matrix h and compute 
it's square, it's just the identity matrix, and that's the reason why this is the quantum wire. Okay, so a, just a little question to ask. Um, you know that, that Hadamard uh, gate, the, the matrix representation, or the Hadamard matrix, uh, as we'll often call it, you might wonder, so let's uh, write it out, uh, you might wonder why there's that funny minus sign down there. Why, why is that there? Why uh, don't we instead have, let's call it uh, H tilde, why not just have this? No minus sign. So we have uh, H tilde acting on zero, gives you the equal superposition of zero and one over root two, and similarly for the one state. And actually it's pretty easy to see what the problem is. Imagine that we'd started our, our quantum circuit and applied the H tilde gate or this supposed H tilde gate. But imagine that we'd started with the state 0 minus 1 over root 2. That's a perfectly good quantum state. We apply this H tilde uh, uh, to it. So H tilde times 0 minus 1 over root 2. And you see that you get, this is plus, sorry, is uh, 0 plus 1 over root 2 well, there's a 1 over root 2 factor out the front from here I forgot to write down so minus the same thing 0 plus 1 over root 2 so these terms cancel each other and we're just left with 0 nothing at all and remember, I, I said that you know, the, the quantum states have to be unit vectors. This is not a properly normalized quantum state. So we see that, that having this uh, plus one down here, changing this sign, uh, somehow actually destroys this property of being a properly normalized quantum state. We you know, start with a properly normalized quantum state, we end with something which isn't. And that's in some sense, or well, it's closely related to uh, the fact that H tilde uh, is not actually a legitimate uh, quantum uh, gate. We'll explore this fact uh, a little bit more in the videos uh, to come. But, but H itself actually does have the property that anything which comes in normalized goes out normalized as well. You can check that uh, if you wish, uh, prove it uh, to yourself. We'll prove it uh, in a couple of videos time. In fact, we'll prove something uh, much more general. Uh, in the intervening time, or well, there's going to be an, an intervening video uh, where we're going to take a little bit of a digression and we're going to look at this normalization condition in a little bit more detail, why it's true, what it means, and in particular we're going to look at what it means uh, to measure the state of a qubit and to extract information from it. And that process of measurement turns out to be intimately connected uh, to the normalization condition uh, and ultimately uh, to understanding more general single qubit quantum gates.